a visit to the fairground should be fun with thrilling rides, white knuckle rides or just gentle amusement. But the machines can cause serious injury if they're not properly examined and maintained. Nowadays, structural failures of fairground rides are rare because on many rides, effective, thorough examinations are made by competent people. If all rides were examined in this way, the risk of failure would be even lower. The Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 places responsibilities on virtually everybody at work. This legislation regulates the risks to people of fixed parks and travelling fairgrounds. Safety measures have been agreed between the Fairground Industry Trades Associations and the Health and Safety Executive or HSE. They are set out in the Code of Safe Practice at fairs. The Code recommends action in the following areas. Design verification. Initial testing. Thorough examination. Regular maintenance. Training of operators. Safe operation. Observance of the code is the best means of meeting the general requirements of the Health and Safety at Work Act. Periodic thorough examination of every passenger carrying device at least once every 14 months is an important requirement of the code. Where a device is used for only part of the year, it should be examined before the season starts or at least within three months. If at any time repairs or modifications are made which may affect the safety of the device, it should be re-examined before being brought back into use. The code requires every examination to be the responsibility of an appointed person, known also as the ride examiner, who is at least 25 years old, independent of the owner, controller and operator of the device, and has the appropriate qualifications, knowledge, experience and resources to carry out their work. Technical adherence to the code recommends how thorough examinations should be done. A ride examiner should consult the manufacturer's literature and the ride logbooks. The following checks should be made in all cases. The device should be examined to see that it is properly erected. The owner should be asked about repairs or modifications which have been carried out. Critical components should be identified, exposed and visually examined for signs of excessive wear, corrosion or cracking. Some components need more than visual examination. Then, non-destructive testing may be called for. The timber should be examined for damage, rot or missing paint. Timber joints should be checked to be sure they've not weakened. 
any hydraulic or pneumatic systems should be tested for leaks and examined for damage. Systems must remain within their specifications. Electrical installations and supply should be examined and tested. Passenger restraints must be given special attention. Every single one should be examined. Many modern rides are highly stressed and the failure of a single component could lead to a serious accident. One example in recent years was capstan shaft failures on rides of this general type known as cyclone twist rides. When the HSE brought the problem to the attention of owners and ride examiners, machines were modified. Examiners now pay particular attention to the critical components and capstan shaft failures have been virtually eliminated. Component parts of fairground rides are likely to be subject to fluctuating stresses at the magnitude and frequency which can result in fatigue failure. Metal fatigue, which shows itself as progressive cracking, can be a major factor in structural failures and should be of serious concern to those in the fairground industry. Some metal fatigue can't be detected by visual inspection alone. In such cases, non-destructive testing or NDT techniques are used. A suitably equipped examiner will carry out the tests on site or send components to specialist labs. Magnetic particle testing is widely used to reveal surface cracks in ferromagnetic materials such as steel. Dispersion tests can reveal surface cracks on most materials. Thorough pre-cleaning is required. Each test can take up to an hour to complete. To detect flaws within materials such as the metal of this looping coaster, gamma ray or X-ray radiography can be used. Ultrasonic testing is another useful method of revealing internal flaws. When NDT is needed, the ride examiners should specify clearly which components and parts are to be tested. The results from the NDT must be seen and assessed by the ride examiner before the test certificate can be signed. Once all the checks have been completed, test runs may be done. Not surprisingly, a thorough examination can take a long time. The range of skills required is so diverse that a number of individuals and organisations may be needed to complete the task. In such cases, all the work should be marshalled by the appointed person. If everything proves to be satisfactory, including reports from the specialists or results of tests, then the appointed person can sign the pass certificate and record the examination in the ride logbook. A current certificate of thorough examination issued by an independent appointed person should be retained along with the logbook for each ride. The introduction of the Code of Safe Practice at Fairs, with its requirements for thorough examination and certification, has resulted in a decline in structural or component failures. Ride owners and ride examiners have a vital role to play. The proper examination and maintenance is essential for the safe operation of rides. Safety is not only expected by the public, it is required by the law.